that I will meditate therein both day and night on a chapter in the morning and a chapter in the evening and because I do my life is blessed it's no more a mess now everything I touch come on everything I touch now turns to success if you believe that shout hallelujah amen put your hands together and welcome everybody online with us on Facebook Praise God, hallelujah. Welcome to our Faith Family Church broadcast. We're glad you're here. Come on, let's go before God and get something good. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this, another opportunity to meditate your word. Your word, O oh God, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We ask you to shine the light of your word to us today by the Holy Spirit. Help us to understand what you're saying to each of us. Let not one of us leave the same way that we came. Let us all be changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, open with me in your Bible to an Old Testament passage called Habakkuk. In Habakkuk chapter 2, we'll find our text for this message. If you don't have your Bible with you, we do have it available on the, the screen, so please watch this. In verse 1, the Bible says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. When you talk about standing or sitting, you're talking about a position. And I'm going to watch to see, I'm going to position myself to see what God is going to say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reprieved. The Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Notice that the vision speaks. That's very interesting. It shall speak. It won't lie, though it tarry. Wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And he says, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I want to talk to you today about a message that I want to call Make It Plain. Somebody say, Make It Plain. And that's one of the statements that was made when. The prophet of God said, you know what? I'm going to get myself in a position where I can hear from God. And I can tell you, in the season, in the day that we are in right now, we need to position ourselves to hear from God about our future. About the upcoming season that we're about to step into. How many of y'all know it would behoove us to get a word from God? And so he positioned himself. He said, I'm going to see what he says. And the Lord answered him. When you get in the position to hear from God, he will speak to you. He said, write the vision. Evidently, uh, God not only spoke to him, but showed him something. Gave him a vision of something that's coming in the future. And he said to him, now listen, write down what I just showed you. Not only do I want you to write it down, but I want you to make it plain. Somebody say make it plain. Make it plain upon tables so that he that readeth it may run with it. So the word of the Lord came unto me. I, I, I heard it in my heart, not that I heard it outside, but to talk to you today about making it plain. But uh, the it in the making it plain is the vision that God has for your life. How many of y'all know vision is important? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, it says in verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So think about that. The Bible says that when you don't have a vision, I, I know it's talking about a group, and he's saying that, you know, if there's a group of people and they don't have a vision, for their future or where they're going, then they're going to perish. 
but even individually. It seems like this verse of Scripture is, is somehow connecting not having vision to perishing. And I, don't, I don't know about you. I don't want any perishing in my life. Amen. I don't want my marriage to perish. I don't want my finances to perish. I don't want my body or my health to perish. And so there must be a divine connection between not having vision and perishing. So when you talk about perishing, you know, that's kind of, we don't use that word often. But it, it came to mind, didn't John 3, 16 talk about perishing? Yeah, in John 3 and 16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's that word again. I wonder if there's a connection. Oh, absolutely there's a connection. And we'll see it in this. We know Jesus came because God loved us so much. And notice he says that whoever believes in Jesus, they should not perish. I don't know if you've ever caught that should not. In other words, it's not automatic that when you accept Jesus, that life's going to be good for you. Oh, I'll say it to this side. It's not automatic. He said that whoever believes, how many of y'all believe in Jesus? Well, it should be that you not perish but that you have everlasting life. But if you know it like I know it, there are millions of Christians that if you look into their lives, there are things that are perishing. And the reason why I submit to you, in many cases, is because of lack of vision. They're not seeing things the way that they should see them. And although they believe in Jesus, they are perishing because it's not automatic. He said that whoever believes in him should not. Somebody say should not. They should not perish. But what does it mean to perish? Another verse of scripture that came to mind was in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 16, the Bible tells us, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is what? Perishing, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. What is he talking about? Well, he's talking about our physical body. I mean, after about 25 things begin to change. This is sweet. And not necessarily for the better. I mean, in my mind, I feel like I'm 25, but I'm, I'm a little bit older than that. Amen. And your body will let you know, you know, you can't move that fast. Whoa, ho, ho. Hey, 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 you can't move that fast. <laughs> but what's happening? Well, because of Adam's mistake, our bodies are experiencing death, or, as the scripture says here, uh, our bodies are decaying. We, we have a dental hygienist as a part of our faith family, and um, one of the things we know about uh, tooth cavity. Come on, what's happening with, with, with a little cavity? If you don't correct it, you're going to lose the tooth. Why? Because if you look at it in the microscope, there's decay. The, 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 the tooth itself is being destroyed. Notice the present participle of this verse. Now, I'm, I wasn't good at English, so if I mess that up, please forgive me. But let's just act like you understand what I mean. <laughs> Notice he said the outward man is perishing. Could it be that there are parts of your life that are perishing because of not having clear vision? Well, what do you mean perishing? Well, I, I looked at the word, I and mean, if you can go back because I missed it. Um, the simple word perish means to rot. That is to ruin. What if there's a part of your life or, you know, your family or you, what's going on with you that, that is perishing? Here it was also to change for the worse. I don't want anything in my life to change for the worse. Come on, I want it to change for the better, not the worse. Amen. Well, what that is connected to is me having clear vision, but not only having clear vision, but being able to take that next step, which is and make it plain so that I can run with it. And, and, and for a clear definition of perishing, it's the act of something that perishes. Well, what was that? Or the act of something that is becoming destroyed or ruined 
It means to decay or it means destruction. And then the last part that I thought was just unique was things that happen in an untimely manner. Have you ever been there where it just wasn't, it wasn't a good time for that to happen? Well, that's the effect of perishing. So again, where there is no vision, perishing is the result. And if you don't want that, then make sure, make sure you take the time to get God's vision for your life. So my challenge today in this message is to help you to get God's goals, not just your goals. Because God's vision for your life doesn't change. And you may have seen God's vision for you and your family in his holy word. For example, in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, the Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith God, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and an expected end. Amen? So God's vision, he said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and I, or I set you apart for good things. How many of y'all know Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly, that he does have a good life for you? Amen. Well, his vision for your life doesn't change. But it's so important to get his goal. We're at a point where right now people will be setting New Year's resolutions. I'm going to lose the weight that I gained from Thanksgiving to Christmas, you know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do differently with my money, you know. I'm going to pay off some debt and put some things in, in the savings. Well, I don't want you to just set goals. I want you to get goals. And not just get goals in general, get God's goals. Come on, somebody. Get God's goals for your life. See, having a vision without goals is just a dream. Amen? Having a vision without goals is just a dream. And so it's so important to get God's goals, not just set goals for your life. So let me talk to you. How many of y'all know that's true? I mean, if you've got a vision, last night I had a dream. And I normally don't have dreams like this, and I knew it was like, uh, it was God showing me something. Uh, and we've obviously been excited about the growth that we've been experiencing. We've outgrown this church. Amen. We outgrew the last building that we're in. Now we're headed to another one. But even in my dream, I saw us in a building, not the one that we're headed to, and it was packed before the service started. And it seemed like 40% of the people that were there were there and they were visiting. Can you give me a little more microphone? I'm sorry. Isn't that amazing? And so, and man, I didn't want to wake up from that dream, but the alarm clock went off. And I was like, oh, man, that was good. And, and it was so vivid. I was like seeing people, and, and we were getting all, and, and God's were doing some amazing things. Well, listen, having a vision for your family or for your business, having a vision without goals, just a dream. How many of y'all know goals are important? And don't just get your own goals. Don't just set goals. I know we're, we're taking time now to write the vision, and we've got a paper that will help you set some specific goals in, in your life, but don't just set them for yourself. For example, if you're going to lose some weight, if you want to lose a little bit of weight, don't just say, well, I'm going to lose 80 pounds. You know, okay, great. All right. And then you, you done gain another 15 <laughs> by this time next. Come on. Well, where'd that come from? Well, you started out, you know, if, if you didn't take the time. How about this? What if you got quiet and asked God about your body? Lord, you know, I've been wanting to lose weight, and I, I really believe you've been dealing with me about what I'm eating and how I'm exercising. But, you know, Pastor, talked about getting your goal. What's your goal for me to lose weight? He may just say 15 pounds. Hey, but if he gives you that goal and you run with that vision and you hit the 15, glory to God. Amen? Amen. So we want you to get God's goals for your life. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 15, the Bible says, let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. Somebody say, make it plain. 
I'm going to be honest with you. I did not know that this scripture was in the Bible. But I, I, I was unctioned. I, I know. I was looking for one other passage of scripture, which I'm about to take it to you in a moment. Because I know that God will make things plain to you. Just as he said, write it down and make it plain. But I just put in my little search, make it plain. And this scripture says, you know what? I believe God will. Somebody say, God will. Make it plain to you. And so, um, did we do number one? I didn't say it. I'm sorry. Can we, like, go all the way back? I'm sorry. So, number one, I want to talk to you today about how to get God's goals for your life. How do you do it? Number one, ask him to do what? Make it plain. Do y'all believe that if you were to take time, get yourself in a position to ask God, I know the vision that you have. You've been talking to me about it since I've been a child. I know the dreams that you've shown me and revealed. I know you've got better things than what I'm experiencing right now, but I need to know, God, how do I get there? I, you, you've shown me some amazing things about my children's lives, but I need you to help me. How do we get there? I know you've given me this wife, and, and I know we're supposed to have an amazing marriage, but how, come on, y'all help me. How do I get there? If you ask him, he will make it plain. He'll give you a step one and a step two that'll move you in the direction of where you want to be. So the first step to getting God's goals is to make it plain. And the Bible says in the book of, in the book of Philippians that he'll make it plain. And then in the book of John, he says something similar. So let's look at John chapter 16. Now, I was going to set it up, but I, I, let's just read it. A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me because I go to the Father. Now, I know that doesn't sound like it fits, but if you've ever read your Bible, how many of y'all know Jesus can say some things that just are straight off the wall? Like, it would be equivalent to twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, I wonder, <laughs> you know. I mean, just like, what are you talking about, Jesus? Have you ever been there? Where it's almost like, you know, you've ever gone to a church or listened to a message? How about this? Have you ever read a chapter in a book? Not just the Bible, but a book, and you had to go back and read it again because you didn't get it the first time? Well, Jesus makes a unique statement. He says, a little while and you will see me. You will not see me. And again, a little while you will see me because I go to the Father. This reminds me of John Cena. Um, he's a, a WWF wrestler. You can't see me. I see some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I could just see Jesus, you know, saying some profound things to the multitude, telling them parables and illustrations. And he says, y'all can't see me. And they're like, Jesus, you're standing right here. As a matter of fact, the very next verse, in verse 17, he says, then some of his disciples said among themselves, what is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. Come on, somebody. You ever been in a conversation where the person's talking to you? It's like, what are they talking about? Maybe the boss comes out and says something. You're like, what is, did, you, did you get what he was saying? Right? Well, the disciples, I want you to put yourself in the position because there's times in communication where somebody's communicating something to you, but you don't understand what they're saying. The disciples were there, and they were there with the Lord. Then some of his disciples, uh, let me get it one more time. He says, what is this that he said? What is, think about it. It's one thing for somebody on the job to say it or in our, our spouse. But how many of y'all know if God is saying something to you and you don't get it? I mean, God is saying, is, is talking to you. And you're like, what is he saying? To me? Have you ever been there? What is God's will for my life? That's probably the number one asked question of pastors and ministers. In all of my years in ministry, one of the number one things people want to know is what is God's will for my life? What is God saying to me? Pastor Stan, you seem like you can hear from God. Matter of fact, the message that I'm preaching to you, the, the, the scriptures that I'm giving to you, God gave them to me supernaturally. I'm so excited, right? Because I know I've heard from God. But people are like, I can't hear from God. Well, wait a minute. 
The Bible says, didn't Jesus say, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger's voice they will not follow? Never say, I can't hear from God. If you belong to him, you have an innate capacity to be able to distinguish his voice from the crowd. Hallelujah. So ask him to make it plain. Verse 18 goes on to say, they said, as a result of what they were thinking, they said, what is this that he says, a little while? What does he mean, a little while? We don't know what he is saying. Again, we don't want to be in the last part of this verse where we don't know what God is saying to us about the future. He sees the end. He knows everything, good and bad, that will happen and wants to give you the detours to get around the pitfalls. Amen? We don't know what he's saying. Well, Jesus took a minute then, and when we read our chapter, we'll be able to connect in the moment. He heard them, and he began to speak to them, I guess, to make it clear. But in verse 25, the Bible says, These things I have spoken to you in figurative language. But the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in a figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. See, that's the verse that I was led by the Holy Spirit to go to. But then in backing up and just reading a little bit, I found out that they were in a situation where God was speaking to them, but it wasn't plain to them. And he explains why. He says, these things I've been speaking to you in figurative language. In other words, I've been talking to you in code or in an illustration, but he says this time is coming when I'm no longer going to speak to you in a figurative language. How many of y'all know God will speak to you? And he can not just speak in a figure. For example, the dream that I have could be figurative. You know, I was seeing a different building, but it could be figurative as it relates to what we're about to, what we're about to experience. Amen? Amen. And then he says, I will tell you plainly. So here's another scriptural proof that he will make it plain. Well, again, if I would take the time to read what they said right after that and what he said, you know, we just keep the extra time. But in verse 29, they said this. His disciples said to him, see, now you're speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. <laughs> you ever been there? Somebody talked to you, now you're talking my language. Right? <laughs> You know, I remember Charlie Brown. You know, and sometimes when people are talking to you, it might be bah, 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 bah. I mean, you know their mouth is moving, sound is coming out of their mouth, but you have no clue what they're saying. Sometimes it happens with me with my wife if she talks to me while I'm watching the game. Oh, I'm gonna go on this side so I don't get in trouble. Come on, somebody. And it's so weird because it could be like right at a critical play. I mean, we could be in the red zone. And we, you know, we're, we're trying to get the ball in the end zone. And she's over here talking and saying something to me. And the funny, I mean, I'm being honest. I have no idea what she said. <laughs> and she's sitting right here. But I'm so locked into the game. How many of y'all know that's the same way it is with God? He is talking to you all the time. Every day, we just did an experience. Dr. Scott came on, on Christmas Eve, and he had us just be quiet for a moment. And he said, I want you to listen. And he's talking about being still to hear God speak to you, to cut out all of the outside stuff, and that you can hear the voice of God. And Jesus said it. He said, I'm not speaking. I'm going to speak plainly. And they said, now you're talking. You're not talking in a figure of speech. You are speaking plainly to us. So, so number one, how to get God's ghost. Number one, say it. Ask him to make it plain. Amen. You can just tap that. Amen. Ask him to make it plain. Number two. The second thing you do to get God's goals is you keep yourself in a position of hearing. Keep yourself in a position of hearing. What do you mean by that? Now, we read it in Habakkuk. He said, I'm going to put myself in a position to hear from God. I'm going to stand upon my watch. Come on. I'm going to sit upon the tower so I can hear what he says. Well, there's actually a story that the Lord took me to in Luke chapter 10 that shows us that in order to get God's ghost, we need to put ourselves in a position to hear. In Luke 10 and verse 38, he says, Now it happened as, he, as they went, he entered into a certain village, 
and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. Now, incidentally, this is the same Mary and Martha and Lazarus that we've been studying over the last few weeks. And incidentally, we're back here again, led by the Holy Spirit to make another powerful point. So think about it and go there with me. Jesus is going through Bethany and he decides to stop by Martha, Mary, and Lazarus' house. Verse 39 says, and she said she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. What are we talking about? We're talking about keep yourself in a position to hear. Sometimes, you know, you may be in a different room and somebody is talking to you, and from where they are, you can kind of hear that they're talking to you, but you can't make out what they're saying. You're, in other words, you're not in a position. Oh, y'all got to help me today. Whoa, this is good. You are not in a position to hear him. Look what the Bible says. Mary is at this house, and she's in a position. Where is she? She's sitting. And not only is she just sitting, she's sitting close to him at his feet. Where are the feet of Jesus? Somebody say, on the ground. <laughs> Whoa, that's good. But work with me. Now, technically, the feet of Jesus are seated at the right hand of the throne of God. But Paul calls us the body of Christ. And he said one part of the body can't stand in the other part. And he calls Jesus the head of the body. Well, if you ask the real literal question, where are the feet or the figurative question, where are the feet of Jesus? They are in the body of Christ. One of the positions that you want to keep yourself in is in church. Oh, the, the amen kind of went down on that one. Keep yourself, notice she is at the feet of Jesus. That keep sitting at his feet is like sitting in a service. And that is a position for him. Notice that she sat at his feet and heard his word. You go back one. Heard his word. Somebody say, heard his word. What is that referring to? Notice, you know, it's not enough for you to just hear the word on Sunday. Especially if you don't go to church every Sunday. But thank God for technology. If did you miss because of work or for whatever reason, you could be, and I know many people are right now listening to me. I'm their pastor, not just in the World Wide Web, but, I mean, there are faith family members right now that are listening online. What are they doing? They're feeding their spirit. Jesus said, man cannot, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Not one person here looks like you only have one meal once a week. I'm not saying anything more than that. I know it's Thanksgiving and Christmas and, you know, we really, amen. But we don't look like we've only had one meal a week. Oh, it's quiet. Somebody say move on. But then in the spiritual sense, some of us are sitting here and in the realm of the spirit, it looks like some of us have, have only had one meal spiritually a week. I thank God for Faith Plus. I thank God for Faith Plus. Faith Plus is an app that you can get for free on your phone, and the, the, the leader of that, uh, of that entity is giving Faith Family the opportunity to be on that app free of charge. You can download that app and hear the Word of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at one click of a button on your phone. And you can especially get the Faith Family Church broadcast, which starts January 1st. I'm excited about that. Amen? So it's so important for you to hear the word of God. Amen. What else does it say? In verse 40, he says, but Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? And therefore, tell her to help me. Notice, Mary was getting the word. Mary sat at his feet. Mary was hearing the word of God. Let me give you two more positions. How many of y'all know that fasting is a position of hearing? When you're turning down the plate, see, what you're doing is telling your stomach to be quiet. Right? Because a lot of times we can't hear from God because of our appetite. 
We can't hear from God because our body is working on digesting the food. We can't hear from God because we're entertaining our mind 24 hours a day on social media and in movies and television. Come on, somebody. But what if you take time to just get in his presence, sit at his feet in prayer, and sit at his feet in fasting and hear his word of God? Well, Martha wasn't in that place. She was distracted by what was going on on the job and all these other things. And look at what Jesus said to her. He said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. How many of y'all know you've got different parts of your life? There's a spiritual part. There's a family part. There's a work part. There's a money part. There's a body part, right? But how many of y'all know there's a priority in those different parts of your life? Yeah, work is important. But work's not more important than family. Somebody's over here. Family is important. But family is not more important than God. You can lose your family by neglecting your relationship with God. Amen. God is most important. And that's what he was saying to her. One thing is needed. What if there was in your life one thing between you and your next level? Between you and promotion? Between you and vision manifesting? I submit to you, hearing God and getting God's goals is the one thing that's necessary above all things. And Mary has chosen the good part, right? That priority she gave above all. So number one, what do you do to get God's goals? Number one, you ask him to make it plain. And then number two, you do what? You keep yourself in a position of hearing. Number three is simply this. Be ready to handle what you hear. (laughs) I wonder if some of us haven't heard from God because we're not ready to hear what he has to say. Have you ever been there? Amen. In John chapter 16, and this was like amazing to me. How many of y'all know the word of God is powerful? So I had all of these scriptures coming to my heart, and I didn't know how interconnected they were, but the Holy Spirit knew. So I knew that there was a time where Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he told them, there's much that I want to say to you, but you're not ready to handle it now, right? Little did I know that it was right in the same passage when they was talking about, what are you talking about? He's standing right there. Just before John 16, 16, in verse 12, it says this. Jesus said to the disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Oh, talk to me, Jesus. What if that is true for us? That there's things that Jesus wants to talk to us about. Not just in general, but you personally. Think about it. That if you were to take the time to get quiet enough, that there's still some things that you, he's talked to you, he shared some things. But what if there's still some more things that he wants to say to you? Would you want to know what they were? But listen, what if you found out that the reason why he hasn't been able to say it? Because you, you can't bear it right now. You all remember Jack Nicholas in the room? I think it was Officer and the Gentleman. I was going to play the clip, but I can do it. You can't handle the truth. Now, that quite wasn't it, but you all remember that? Now, think about that. He said, there are many things that I have to say to you, but you cannot bear them right now. In other words, he's saying, you can't handle it right now. Now, let me submit to you that statement from Jack Nicholas as it relates to the truth is a lie. Because according to Jesus, you can handle the truth. And he wants you to. Think about it. When he appeared to uh, the disciples, Thomas wasn't there, and then he came back, and Thomas was there. Notice what he said to Thomas. He said, handle me. He said to his disciples when he appeared to them better, he said, handle me. For they thought he was a ghost. But he said, a spirit has not flesh and bone like I have. So he says, handle me. Somebody say, handle me. 
but then think about this. Je didn't Jesus say, I am the way? Come on. I am the truth and I am the life? Well, if he say, handle me and I'm the truth, guess what? You can handle. Woo, I preach it better than you say it, amen. If he is the way, the truth, and the life, and he says, handle me, then you can handle the truth. You know, somebody said, and, and even in relationships, well, I, I can't tell her, you know, you know, I, that'll hurt. You know, uh, the, what do they say? The truth hurts? Well, lies are worse. And if you speak the truth in love, healing can happen. I'm going to stay away from that so I can finish this message. Amen. <laughs> but as it relates to the truth of God, you can handle it. But you've got to be ready. You've got to put yourself in a position to handle it. Because, you know, you know, you can mess up the plan of God for your life or at least delay it if you're not ready to handle it. Think about Joseph. God showed him in a vision, his future. He's telling it to his brothers, and it created an animosity between them. He ended up dealing with a lot that maybe he didn't necessarily have to deal with it, or at least through them, but in it, he kind of spoke ahead of time, as it were. How about this, when Zachariah was, you know, visited by an angel about having a baby when his wife is barren and she is old, come on. He said, you, the angel said, you know what? You sound like you're about to mess this up. So you can't talk <laughs> until this baby is born. Come on, y'all help me if you know your Bible, right? And what is that saying? You can mess up and, and cause things uh, to be delayed. You can't, you can't cancel out the plan of God for your life. But you can certainly delay the manifestation of it by not, God, you want me to do, oh, I can't never see. Oh, Lord, <laughs> come on, y'all help me now. And so he's like, you know what, I can't, I can't share that with you because you're not ready to hear it. So what am I saying to you? The point is, be ready to hear it. If you look at this in the Amplified, it says, I still have many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them, take them upon you. What am I saying? Be able to hear big things that God has, tough things that you may have to deal with knowing that he's got an end in mind. Amen? And then lastly, you're not able to grasp them. What is he talking about? He's talking about being able to handle it. Let me get ready to close with this. <laughs> this, is, this is good, ain't it? Man, we had a ball at the 830 service. This is the best way, if you haven't made the decision, to do the Daniel fast. 21 days of positioning. Yourself. And understand this, fasting does not change God. It's not going to change God's mind about your marriage. He wants you to be in that marriage. Amen. It's not going to change God's mind about your children. It's not going to change God's mind. He has good things in plan for you. You know what fasting changes? You. It gives you a more sensitive heart to hear from God because you are turning down the voice of your body. So when you decide, I'm only going to eat vegetables and peanuts and whatever's on that list that they put, amen, no meat for 21 days? Can I talk about that? Because it got quiet. that that hamburger is keeping you from hearing from God. <laughs> I'm being honest, right? Because you had no controls when your body say, I want it, doesn't matter if God wants to spend some time talking to you, you're going to do what your body says because you're just used to feeding the body, feeding the body. And even if, for, for, you know, if you're under the care of a physician, do what they tell you to do. If, if you can't do without, you know, do what is wise, right? But you can fast. Not only those things, you can fast television. 21 days, no TV. What about the game? But which is more important, God or the game? Ooh. <laughs> what about I'm telling you? Put yourself in a position to hear 21 days. So I think I'd rather go with the fashion on the paper and still watch the Super Bowl, come on, and the playoff <laughs> than to cut off the TV. <laughs> let, me, let me finish my message. Okay, so how do you get God's goals? Number one, come on, y'all help me now. Ask him to make it plain. Will he do it? Yes, he will. Number two, do what? Keep yourself in a position of hearing. What's that? 
that's in prayer, that's in fasting, that's coming to church, right? And not just prayer, fast, come to church, listen to it online, right? And then number three, what do you do? You be ready to handle what you hear. It's all going to be good, amen. It'll be good, but be ready to handle it. That means be quiet about it. If you need to be quiet about it, speak it in a timely way. It's the number of things God can say to you. But then number four, do what? Let the Holy Spirit help you to hear. You say, Pastor, where do you get that from? This is amazing. When he said, I still have many things to say to you, but you're not ready to hear, in the very next verse, he says, however, when, the, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. So the fourth point is to rely upon the help of the Holy Spirit. And think about it. He positioned it. He said, there's things that I want to talk to you about, but you're not ready to hear it. But when the Holy Spirit comes to you, he'll lead you into what I want to say to you. He'll help you hear me. And that's what he was saying in verse 13. So what am I saying to you? Let the spirit of truth, talking about the Holy Spirit, you can handle the truth. He'll tell you the truth. He'll guide you into all the truth. And notice what he does. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit, whatever he hears, he speaks. The Holy Spirit himself doesn't just speak on his own authority. Who is he listening to? The Father, the one who has the vision for your life. He'll hear the Father, and then he'll say, you know what, I heard God say that this is his will for your life. So do this first. Let me give you this goal. Do this first. God wants you to finish your degree. Now, you saw yourself owning your own business. You left that associate or that bachelor's or that master's program a long time ago. And right now, in your mind, you don't see a connection between finishing that and doing this. I don't know who I'm talking to. But how do you get to the vision realized in your life? You get God's goal. See, he knows that by you finishing this, it'll put you in position for this. And he knows that by doing this, that's going to set you up for that. And you're going to meet somebody there that's going to cause this to be right where you need to be. Amen? So what am I saying? Let the Holy Spirit help you hear from God. Did y'all get anything out of that message? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Stand up on your feet. Thank you, Facebook, for being a part of this service today. We'll see you.